Hi there. Welcome to Lunch for the Soul. I have a fabulous guest to introduce you today. I hope you're all having a great day. It's been a, a lot of heavy news lately, and so I'm happy to be able to just hopefully give you a break in your day and to introduce you to someone who's incredibly uplifting and someone hopefully you can find a way to relate with. So let's bring in Jacob or in Ukraine, his friends call him Valera Allen. Welcome to Lunch for the Soul. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. I love that you're here with us. Now you're in Arizona, but you were in Kingwood not too long ago. I want to talk a little bit about your journey and tell us first of all. So you're from Ukraine, but a family from Kingwood adopted you and brought you here to the States. What happened? How did all that go down? Well, it was started in 2014 when I was uh, in living in Ukraine and my director from school, she was coming and say, hey, this summer, American people was calling me and they was uh, interested to just host you over the summer. Would you like to do that? I was really scared to like go to America, speak English. I'm not really good in English. And I was nervous, but I say, sure. They say, oh, no worries. It will be another person there. Um, he's all been already hosted. He know English, so he can help you. So over summer, I was spent a lot of time there with the family. And we have so much fun. After, like, in the end of the, when I almost have to go back, they come in the room and they say, hey, would you like to live here forever? And that question was really like stuck in my head and I was paused for like a minute and I have to think like what to do. I was shocked, uh, but I say yes. And a year later, I was living here. That's incredible. Where were you living in Ukraine? Let's talk about what was happening in your life then, because as a teenager, you had been dealing with something your whole life, a condition called spina bifida. And what was your medical care like in Ukraine? What, was it up to par? Was it what you needed in your life? Well, since I was uh, without parents, I was going to the hospital. So government was pay for me. And sometimes happened the doctor does not really care about me really well. They... Um, understand that I do not pay for them and it was not really good. Uh, um, I see sometimes when doctor does not use it like uh, um, gloves on their hands and mm -hmm. I was like, this is probably what's caused infection, but he's mm -hmm. arguing with me like, you can't walk because when you walk, you put the pressure on it and you make it worse for yourself. I'm like, how can I make it worse if I'm on a wheelchair? I'm not walking. Everything was worse. It's you're not using the right instructions. You're supposed to put the gloves before you touch the area infected. And sometimes um, this happened when I can spend the, like six months in the hospital straight away with spending Christmas there or when my friends and uh, people from my school visit me and give me some presents. <laughs> It had to be. So, so you ended up having to have one of your legs amputated. And then you came here to the Houston area and your new family from Kingwood took you to Tier Memorial Herman, which is known as one of the premier places in the entire country, really in the world to help people rehabilitate and build their lives and their self-esteem back. Talk to us about what they were able to teach you, not only with how to, to, to rehabilitate from your injury, but really to, to get a new sport. Uh, well, as um, when I was in the hospital after amputation, I was no already for sure that I will never get to the hospital again with the same issue because I understand that American hospitality it's much higher level, mm -hmm. and my parents like say no worries everything will be okay and I will trust them. Um, so I was get from hospital like right away almost. It's healed really fast and. I always go back to the track. Um, I'm starting track uh, in the first year of high school when I get there. I always play track after that I did field and also basketball. So basketball, I was play for only two years in Timmy Moore Herman. 
uh, it was nice experiments with the nice people, a lot of traveling, exploring new places. <laughs> it was awesome time for me. Um, um, I don't know what I was to say. Well, it's, it's incredible to see you here and how muscular you are. So we see you here in the wheelchair. You're the one who has your palm up on that ball. How do you stay in in shape? Because it looks like you must lift a lot of weights, or is that from using your own body weight for your upper body? How do you stay healthy? Oh, well, I'm not going to gym every day when we push in, like – everyday chairs we mm -hmm. always use our arms so mm -hmm. it's help us to keep in shape uh, by themselves and of course i'm going to use the gym and mm -hmm. different exercises mm -hmm. but most of the time i'm just staying in shape because of pushing like every day sometimes you not you even realize it but you push in the round house probably five mm -hmm. miles or when you go to somewhere else you can push 10 to 15 miles when you first started learning about para sports and what it was like to play basketball in a wheelchair, was it fairly scary at first when you were at your Memorial Hermann and they were cheering you on and saying you can do it? What what were those first emotions like for you? Well, first when I'm learning it, I was watching them how they play in and sometimes it's happened like aggressive contact in between chairs when you have to stop the people and they go on really fast beat. And I thought, oh, no, I will be flipped and stuff like that. But I see those guys, like, getting flipped. They get back in the chair and keep going. So I'm like, I guess if they can do it, I can do it. I'm trying it. A couple of flips, it was fine. <laughs> it's nothing hurt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How did you get that attitude? I think so many of us think about getting flipped out of anything, and, and we say, no, thanks. That's okay. I'm good. No. How did you find it deep inside yourself to to try it and to do it and to be really so competitive? It's incredibly impressive. It's just you learn it from other people. You see, okay, it's mm -hmm. not like you have to start it. Oh my gosh, help me out. It's just learning how to be by yourself, be responsible. And over time, you're just getting used to it. And it's not in like something special. You, you you know, it's a normal thing. It's happened every day. Well, I want to talk about something just so incredibly, speaking of incredible, is what you've been able to pull off. And that is four marathons. I, I can't imagine being able to pull off 26.2 miles doing anything. But you get in that racer and you go. What, what made you, first of all, decide that you wanted to try that? Uh. It was just, I'm not used to the going uh, marathons. I was a sprinter and my distance was like 100 meters. It's my favorite since it's like you just 15 seconds sprint and you're done. But my coach was like, would you like to try a 5K? I'm like, sure, let's try it out. And I was done 5K. I was like, it, and he was like, would you like to get it up and try 10K? I say, okay, let's try it. And like that was good after 10K, I did half marathon, after a full marathon. And I, it's just not about you going super fast. You just keep it same speed for a long time. You see many things. It's not like a round track where you see same thing every circle. Um, you see much more people there, uh, people cheering for you. You're racing with other um, amazing people. Um, you're exploring new places. So, yeah, I was done Boston Marathon, Houston Marathon. Uh, we did um, Bloomsday, it's a 10K. Um, this weekend, <laughs> I just uh, arrived from New Jersey. We did 10K there. So, we arrived last night. <laughs> And so you just keep finding these new feats, these these new goals for yourself. What's next? Do you have a, a, a new one? And how do you decide what the next will be? Um, next one, I think it will be nationals for us with my team. I'm not sure when is it. We just, I'm like a person who's not really prepared where are we going or something like that. Uh -huh. My job is just raised. They say, you go on this and this day, <laughs> you go on this way. Okay, I'm ready to go. So you're just ready to rock. Whatever. Now, when you say team, is that through the University of Arizona or who is your team? Yeah, I will, I'm part of the University of Arizona team. It's really big program. 
it's more than one sport it's have uh, like basketball rugby swimming even they try to do hockey i don't know how it's a desert it's super hard hard to do hockey team here since it's so hot but they do the best i hope it will be success and i'm sure your family in kingwood is cheering you on and you've kept up with plenty of people in ukraine too how how is that communication do you talk regularly to people there back in your home country yeah um we're using a lot of instagram facebook mm-hmm. twitter skype to just communicate say hello how are you doing because it's a hard time i know it's hard for them and sometimes you say hey no worry everything's okay it's pretty a lot for them how much did it mean to you when you were recently in the boston marathon and you saw flags from ukraine hanging and and, and windows and did that mean a whole lot to you for people to be giving you a high five and asking you more about your country and what was happening there and just feeling their support Yes, it was feeling of that it's like you're not like only person who's supporting Ukraine. It's a mm-hmm. much more and I was felt like yeah, this is uh, maybe this person wasn't from Ukraine, but I feel like he's a my ground neighbor. Mhm. I can see where that would mean so much to you. Is it almost a relief now that you're in the United States through all of that strife that's happening there for you now? Uh, I'm not understanding the question. Sorry. Oh, I, I was just asking, is it, a, is it a little bit of a relief for you to be in the United States and away from, from the war-torn country that you, you used to call home? Yeah, it's hard for me because, you know, my friends there and I'm really worried every time asking them if everything's okay, yeah, everything's yeah. okay. And they say, no worry, it's fine. But I say worry because you never know when it's mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. What is going on with as far as your spina bifida is concerned? What do doctors tell you as far as anything else that you can expect with it? Well, right now I'm visiting my doctor to say everything's okay. Um, except uh, they saying like, oh, you're uh, really doing well. So we not have to do it every half of the year, like every six months meeting. They said, we can do it every year. I'm like, okay, it means I guess everything's going really good. <laughs> oh, that's great. What a, what a relief for you to be able to hear because you have been through a whole lot with it. Then what is it like being in college now? Are you loving it? Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun here and it's like you're not with the family, but I meet my friends from team. It's like new family right now. So we're doing fun together. Um, it's just new experience for me. And mm-hmm. first year was not really well because of COVID hits and I was online. I, was, I know it's like college, you're in a room, but you still like, it's not the same as you've been on the campus mm-hmm. and you with a lot of students meeting new faces every day. Mm-hmm. When I got to talk to you a few weeks ago, or maybe last week, your mom was there visiting you from Kingwood. Do you get to see people from the Houston area very often? Uh, yeah, sometimes when we travel in, we hear like, oh, we going somewhere and we're from Houston. We're like, oh, wow, we're the same thing. And I think it's three of us. It's uh, my teammate, Chelsea and Dustin. They're also from Houston area. So people are like, oh, wow, why are you then from Arizona? We're like, we college there, we team, we practice together and travel together for different competitions. Uh, You do a lot of competitions. I just look at all the pictures and all the places that you've been. Walk us through some of these. What what are you doing here? looks like you're pretty fired up. This was, I think, my first, uh, no, it was, I guess it's a, Full marathon. Uh huh. It, it was like one of the first marathons that I have done. That had uh, to be the most amazing feeling. And is it someone who who you got to meet through? Or are they on your team in Arizona? Yeah, this is my teammate Dustin. Uh huh. <laughs> he is born like in Germany, but he already lived over ten years in the United States. So. Well, you have a lot in common. That has to help to have a friend who understands what it's like to come from another country, huh? Yeah, we're both from Europe. So it's much easier to communicate about like food and religion and uh, like uh, 
subculture. Sure. <laughs> oh, I bet. I love this picture. You look so happy. <laughs> I'm like sleepy here. It was like a long competition with Troll back. It's like, let's take a picture. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> oh, and then what about this one? Uh, it was like a night we was before race. We was just take a picture, ask people to have a nice picture. So we have stuff to post it on Instagram and yeah, it was How, really you're, going, you're traveling all over the country. How do you pull off being able to have your regular wheelchair and then traveling with one like this? Oh, um, it's pretty easy. We just like you go into airport, you sign into wheelchair because mm -hmm. you're racing on it and you just take it with you to the gates and it's not a big difference. It's oh, you just good. put your luggage sometimes in and you uh -huh. can push. Oh, that's great. And then it looks like these are some uh, some fun pals too, huh? <laughs> yeah, sometimes people just like graduate college. They're like, oh, Arizona. Oh, my gosh. We just, I'm graduated already 10 years ago. So this person like, can oh. I have a picture? Oh, that is yeah, so sure. neat. And I showed these pictures earlier, but this is your your new family in Kingwood? Yes, ma'am. How much do they mean to you? A lot. I bet. I <laughs> bet. Cool. So do you have any plans after college? Do you know what you're going to be doing? What ha, Have any goals there? Oh, I'm not sure if I will stay for like undergraduate because my coach say if you will stay undergraduate, it's another two years, then we, you can make a, a Paralympics 2024 and 2028. So I'm like, it sounds so good, but study so much. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure if I want to do that. <laughs> so you would have to be in school if you were involved with the Paralympics, is that right? Or or you would just have they want you to stick around there? I could just want me to stay longer in the team. I see. And I really wanted to, but I'm still like have many years to think about it. Uh -huh. and well, so. I your English is really amazing and, and you've you've done this in a fairly quick amount of time. Do you have a suggestion for anyone who's trying to learn a, another language of how um, you pulled it off? Just keep trying, never give up. Just like me, I was in the Ukraine. I never, I never thought that I would come to US. I was like, have a classes for English. I know that I have opportunity to study, but I was like, I'm not planning to use English in my life. And I think I'll go to America. No way. Well, it was my big mistake, and I was happy have to catch up when I get here. It was a hard journey, so oh, yeah. it's better to start when you have as soon as possible, mm -hmm. and then it will be easier. Yeah, it, it is a challenge. I've certainly tried different things for the years, and it does take a whole lot of studying and the belief that you can pull it off. So is there? would you be able to tell all of our viewers today, thank you in your home language for joining us on Lunch for the Soul? What would you say to them if, if you were in Ukraine? How would you say that? Uh, Дуже всім дякую, що прийшли на телебачення подивитись на нас. I just say uh, thank you very much for everybody to come to watch us on TV. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. What a great way to be able to, to say that and, and to be able to hear you do that as well. Well, thank you, Jacob, for joining us. It was just an honor to be able to talk to you and and to have you join us today. And again, Valera, if you were uh, in Ukraine, that's what, what your friends and family would call you. But just yeah. an honor to be able to talk to you. And, and I just wish you the very best. And hopefully we'll see you in the Paralympics. That would be pretty cool. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> All, right, thank you. All right. You take good care of yourself and thanks for sharing your journey. It's really a remarkable one. Thank you. All right. I hope to check in with you later and see how you're doing. All right. And awesome. All right. And I want to thank you all for joining us for Lunch for the Soul. Every Wednesday, 1230, this is the place to be. I hope you'll join us next week. We will have another incredible story to be able to share with you. And the true thing of faith over fear. That's how we live on Lunch for the Soul. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for being here.